Welcome one and all to the Crazy Palace. And today's craziness is from Phobos Knives. It is for operators by operators. You know, like if you're like the owner of this company, Eric, he, I, I guess you would say an operator, right? Green Beret type operator. So he was involved in many operations uh, all over the world, okay? And um, would be paired up with Navy SEAL teams, this and that, depending on what the mission was and where they were going. He became interested in knives. I guess I was trying to get to that point. And then he started making knives. And this one we're going to talk about today. Tier 1, okay? The Tier 1 BC, CPM Magna Cut. 62 Rockwell Cryo Tempered, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. It's available on a bunch of different places like DLT. I think I've seen them listed on Blade HQ. And there's some other sites too. I'll give you all the links to the websites where you can find them. One thing, I mean, this is my third video. I did a video where I introduced like three different models that I still have here. And then... I did a video on the Alaris, which is this one, which is way cool. This is just like probably still my favorite because of this kind of belly here and really the application it could have to food processing, cutting a chicken right in two, mid-flight. Oh, just kidding. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Corn and cluck under a buck. So this is the Tier 1 BC like a bushcrafting type knife, CPM Magna Cut, and a different kind of sheath. This is leather. Whew, this is some stuff, some stuff. So, I mean, he started making knives, and hand making knives for himself, and then the other guys on his operations and stuff saw that, and they go, can you make me one he was making for them? And on and on it came, and then when he uh, uh, left active duty and stuff, he started making knives. So, now he has to make a bunch of these so obviously uh they're done in a production batch but uh it's him behind the whole deal figuring out how he wants the design to work the materials how he wants the heat treat done they're all made of course in the usa goes without saying right and so and then, of course, there's your fire spindle knob thing, so you can uh, you can do that and psh, make your fire, whatever, and uh, you know that kind of thing. I mean, so there's uh, this is uh, for a ferro rod striking, you know. So this is for outdoorsy getting things done use. Um, I'm not going outdoorsy with it right now. Uh, I do the indoor stuff. I've seen a couple of outdoor demos. So if you want to see a video of a guy taking this out and just chopping the shit out of stuff, then there are, are some other uh, videos available online. I just want to kind of give you the overall like G10 liners. Sometimes it's micarta, sometimes it's G10 on the scales. A T20, you can take this apart. We will take it apart. We'll look at that. CPM Magna Cut. How thick? How long? What kind of sheath? What else comes with it? That kind of thing. So that'll be enough. That'll be enough to keep us engaged here for at least 12 or 15 minutes. And this trifold comes with it. So it comes in this big ass freaking box and a fitted foam thing, which is better than my Bark River knives. You know, you, you got any Bark River knives? Love them, right? But it's just, it's in a box like this and they're in the, or no, the sheath's stacked underneath it, the knife up here with the thing. Boom, that's it. There's no fitted foam or anything like that. There's no extra little this and that's. And what is this? This is what he was talking about. This is kind of a, this wicked wax. So you can use this to protect the blade. You can use this to protect the sheath. You can use this to keep from getting sick if, if it's because it's 100% food safe. So if you start using this knife to prep food and this and that, as opposed to using like WD-40 on this, which tastes nasty. WD-40, I can't drink that stuff anymore. It's just not that good. Uh, but this is 100% food safe, okay? 
So this might be what you might want to use as a if you're going to be doing that. So you get this card and it says stuff. You have to learn how to read first, but you can do that. I, I believe in you. Now, also, I'm getting cynical in my own age, in my old age, aren't I? Um, and all the people in my family were school teachers, practically. This, stickers, crazy stickers, more stickers. So you can do that. Put them on the back of your, your one-ton dually. And uh, take this knife with you because he calls these heirloom quality knives. And you know why? Because they can get handed down generation to generation, right? Yeah, because that's thick. That's tough. They're made tough. They're, they're heat treat. Is they're focused on that, they're focused on the grind, the the edge geometry, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so there is a focus on the details. And uh, since I'm testing knives these days, I may send this one to the testing facility to get it stabbed to see what it is. Is it a 60, a 61, 62? What where is it in, in the lay of the land? And so this will be on my waiting list to go in some future batch and get done, okay? But the ergos on this are great. You can move up on it so you can get better control of this blade. Kind of this really subtle recurve in here for pull cuts and that kind of thing. So this, yes, I think this is really going to be an effective. And you know what? Not only is it going to be effective and durable and, well, as we call it, heirloom quality, something that will probably outlast you and maybe outlast your next, uh, next one uh, in the lineage, son, whoever, that you hand it down to, nephew, whoever. But uh, this thing uh, is not like the old-time steels that would have uh, maybe other issues. This MagnaCut is going to be pretty corrosion resistant and have a good balance of toughness and edge retention so you don't want to give up uh toughness you know flexibility and in in favor of edge retention on a bush crafting type knife okay if i'm going to err on one way or the other i'm going to err on making it definitely tough uh, so it won't shatter or chip as opposed to ultra hard edge retention where it might become a bit more chippy and uh, or, you know, prone to fracture. So that's that's the thing. You got to balance that. Yeah. You know, by the way, have you seen Laren Thomas's new book? You know, Dr. Laren Thomas, the metallurgist, he just issued a book out there. I'll put a link to that down below. Actually... Eric with Phobos has had conversations with Laren Thomas about heat treat and treating the metal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know he's interested in this. What I have heard back from people about this knife uh, and the Phobos knives, I haven't heard one negative, not one. Guys that have owned this uh, a Phobos knife for maybe several years, a year, year and a half, they say it's straight up beyond their expectations okay so you have you know you, you know this ain't pretty this is not going to be on the glamour wall case you know that kind of thing under under lights this is going to be the one you're going to actually use and so i guess you got a little place for a ferro rod or whatever to go through here you got snaps you got all kinds of carry options in here and you got a case that's, uh, wow, this is pretty crazy looking, but it looks super high quality. And let's see, since I've never put this blade in here, if I can get this blade in here. And yeah, I can. Ooh, first time in the sheath. And it worked. Works fine. Let me see. How does this go? Okay, yeah, we got our snaps sometimes. Ooh, baby, you got to stretch them a little bit. 
You know what I'm saying? Because you got to get them to wear in the right way. So, wow, you got a lot of places you can put lashing. You could lash this onto a pack or wherever. And all kinds of things you can do with this. Wow, these straps are adjustable. All this. So, let's pull it back out. Oh, yeah, baby. That's leather. That smells good. Okay. Now, how much does it weigh? Do you care? <laughs> I guess. I guess you should. Okay, so 9.56 ounces. That's not a lot, is it? 271 grams. It feels pretty, pretty nimble in the hand, actually. And, and, uh, will it cut anything? Nah, it's no good. Reject. Not gonna work. <laughs> wow. You know, for a, for a knife that I see more as a bushcrafty type knife, it's pretty damn slicey, isn't it? But I showed you the I showed you the stuff, right? 22 inch or 22 degree, 22 inch edge, right? 22 degree edge, heavy impacts, blah blah blah. Uh, 19.5, 17, don't go below, below 17, blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff. Okay, not recommended, and. That kind of thing. So you'll get one of these trifolds in there. It'll talk a lot about what's going on with this specific knife that you're buying. Okay. That's always nice. And how big an old boy is it? Well, let's take a look. Woo, almost six inch blade right there. Brother man. So that's, uh, what's that? 25 centimeters? Yikes. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. 12, no, 15, I'm sorry, <laughs> 15 centimeters. What am I talking about? Um, a little over 11 overall at what, uh, now we can go 28 and a half, right? 28 and a half centimeters overall. God, 25 centimeters. I'm losing my mind. Okay. Now. Let's see this. Ooh, not quite five millimeter blade stock, but close to that at 0.18. Now, how fat is it in your hand? It doesn't feel very fat in the hand, but it's 0.69 at 17.5. And I think I'm grabbing it on the fattest part. Okay. It fills the hand. It's not a real tall handle, top to bottom. Oh, and by the way, yeah, there's part of the... Uh, blade stock hanging through so yeah impact if you need to do whatever use it like a hammer or wake somebody up one or the other <laughs> whatever you're gonna do um then you you have that available as well but i do like this little front choil area where you can choke up and i do like the fact that you know that's sharpened right there and then it stops because then it's easier to strop and it's uh because you got clearance here and maybe to sharpen as well i i don't with the recurve then i guess i would need to probably use my diamond rod on my sharpening system to get that part of it uh but okay uh reinforced here so that ain't no uh you know, it's not a fainting flower there. It's going to take some uh, take some abuse without any problem at all. So, and, and you know, that he's figured out the fire starter, the, you know, the spindle for fire starter, all that kind of stuff. So it's an outdoorsy, it's a survival type knife. And like I said, these baby dolls here, and I don't know, uh, did I... Was I trying to think about cracking this open? And if I am, I need one of these 20s on both sides. Okay, so uh, yeah, the whole thing will turn. Uh, of course, there's uh, the ability to hold this in place. And so that's what we're going to do. We got a number 20 back there. We got a number 20 up here. And let's bust it loose and let's not try and chop any body parts off in the in the process they're tough to get replacement parts for i mean body parts 
Okay, we got these. Now, can we just pull this off? Let's see. It's coming. Um, there we go, finally. Okay, that wasn't too involved, was it? Okay, let's see what we got inside. Okay, we got information in here, don't we? All right, I guess I took the correct part off, the uh, presentation side. And so in here we have some depth, don't we? So really we might have enough depth in there really to be able to put like a little ferro rod, maybe there or there, and then maybe like a little fishing hook with some line, that kind of thing. Kind of just make a little kit, wrap it up and kind of push it in here so you could have some survival, extra survival gear, possibly as well. Okay, now if we kick the rest of this off and we will attempt to you know, do that without cutting my arm off, um, then you can take paracord and you could wrap this if you want or you could attach it to a pole to make it into a spear you know for that kind of purpose etc so you can reach out and touch at a distance and yeah that's a hell of a chunk of a magna cut isn't it okay and oh okay that's where it fits back in here get in there so these little pins they just kind of at the very front of this cutaway and the very back of that cutaway. Okay. And back on here. And that screws right down so I didn't have to catch it from the back to do that. It was good enough to do on its own. And let's see if that'll do the same. Yeah, that's the same. So I didn't need to stabilize it with this. What do you think? I think I've chatted at you long enough. Phobos Knives. This is the Tier 1 BC. By the time this probably is published, those will be out. I was looking the other day and they still weren't out. But there was a, an announcement on the Phobos Instagram. And I'll give you the link to Phobos Instagram. You can message Eric uh, through Phobos Instagram uh, direct messaging. They have an email address as well. And you'll get that when I you click on the link to their website. All that information will be there. There she be. The Tier 1 BC. I'll let you be. And you know what we do around here. We love them knives. So you guys, stay sharp.